All right, so hello, welcome back. I'm Sovereign. We are going to do a TPPH today. This is actually <laughs> the second one because I recorded one. It was awesome. Everything worked. It was beautiful. And then realized that I screwed up OBS and actually had TS in there, which made no sense because it was me talking and TS talking at the same time. So we're going to do this again, and this time without TS, hopefully. So, um, okay, this is the TBPH. This one has three rooms. We are in room number one right now. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna boot over to this gate. But before we do that, we're gonna kill this Violade because Violades are nasty ships. We don't like them. They do some sort of E-War. I'm going to assume they do remote reps. I'm not 100% on that, but I know you you don't like them. So we're gonna sit still, we're gonna kill him because he's a cruiser size. So if we start moving with our tachyons, we're not gonna be able to track for shit. So the DPS ships, like all the Vindicators are already at the gate. Like they're booting it over there because they can track, they can kill all these things, no problem. But for us sniper ships, we have to sit still. So we're gonna sit still, we're gonna kill that. And once it's dead, then we're gonna MWD over to the gate. And then once everything in this pocket is dead, because this is only one spot. So once all of this dies, then we can move to the next one. And I totally forgot to launch my drones. So we have these things called rolls. Right now, I am the AAA, which is the anchor for the sniper ships. If you were a sniper, then you would be basically keeping at range five kilometers on the AAA. And I can't assist because we have too many drones, but okay. So yeah, if you were a sniper, you would be orbiting or keeping at range me, because I am the AAA. But I can't, in the first video, I actually had that part down because I wasn't the AAA, but now I am. So it's kind of awkward, but it'll be fine. This is basically just to show you guys what the site is all about anyway, not exactly the roles. And figuring out the anchor situation isn't too bad. So I think you guys can figure that out, even if it's your first time flying. So we're here at the gate, and we just need to sit and wait until all of this is dead. So right now I have my overview set up to filter by tag. For the most part, you want to, if you're a DPS ship, if you have blasters short range, you want to shoot the numbers from 1 to 9. And if you're a sniper, you want to shoot the letters, so from A through whatever letter, L, whatever letter it might be. Except for J, there's a tag J you never, ever, 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 ever shoot Tag J. Because Tag J is the trigger, and we are purposely blocking the trigger because we don't want more ships on the grid yet. So either we want to kill all the support ships first, the entire wave, before the next one spawns, or if our off-grid boosts aren't working right, or if too many Logies DC'd, or something's wrong and we don't want to fight more ships. All right, so I have my drones, everything else is dead. I'm gonna take the gate, everyone else is taking the gate as well. This is a pretty, this is the most relaxed of the three between TBPH, NRF, and TCRC. This is the easy one. This is the one that everyone kind of just relaxes on. It's the cruise down the river of the three. So this is the second gate. It's almost exactly the same as the first one except the gate is now in front of us. It's right there. But we're gonna sit still and we're going to kill this Mara. It's another support cruiser. It's the remote repair. I know this one remote repairs. And if I'm wrong, then I'm a dumbass, but I'm pretty sure this one's a remote repair for it. So we're probably gonna miss this thing like crazy, which is fine because all we have to do, oh, see, there you go. We all alpha it. <laughs> so most of the time, everyone misses like hell, and this thing's on the field for like 15 seconds. But that time we got lucky, a um, carrier probably smacked it for a whole bunch of damage, and it's gone. All right, so now those are dead. So we can start burning to this next gate. Vindicators have been burning this whole time because that's what they do is DPS. You just burn the gate and shoot things. It's like a drive-by. You just drive by this whole pocket because there's so little in here. This is nothing. This is no DPS. You guys haven't seen it yet, but when you get to the TCRC, the very last one, you'll see that this is this is nothing. This is no DPS at all. Very easy. 
All right. Oh, shoot. I forgot my drones again. See, normally I'm right on top of my drones. What you want to do is you want to assign your drones to assist the drone bunny. And this is someone who has already been determined as the DDD. And that means that they are usually a vindicator with at least two webs. Sometimes it's one web, but you really want to have two. And they get tracking links from the scimitar logistics pilots. So they are basically dedicated frigate and crusader, era, cruiser destroyers. So while we're shooting all of these high DPS and high support status frigates and whatnot, they are off shooting everything else that is either not very threatening, well, they aren't very threatening, but it's also a lot of things that we can't track very well. So if we didn't have someone's purposely shooting this, then right now we'd have like 10 frigates just sitting there. We have to sit on this gate for like five minutes just trying to track these stupid things. But as it stands, like they're already dead right now. So our DDD, Typher, he's, he's good. He's a really good DDD. Whenever I see him in fleet, that's a good thing. Because some DDDs like don't know what they're doing and they're kind of new and they don't, like sometimes there's a bunch of frigates left over. But right now, like they're already dead. So I don't even need my drones out because they're already gone. So we're all good there. So now we're just gonna wait until, ah, I lost our freaking crystal. All right, what am I shooting right now? Multi-frequency, yes. All right, so let's put another one in there. Regroup, and let's keep shooting. All right, so now they're all dead. And we can go into the third and final pocket. So for this one, we are going to have to kill all of the NPCs that surround the Sancha Battle Tower. And then once they are all dead, then we can shoot and kill the battle tower. The battle tower is going to take a long time to kill, so I might just end the recording as we start to shoot it, or shoot it. Depends. If I can find stuff to talk about it, then I'll keep it going, but for the most part, I don't want to just be sitting here for six minutes while I'm shooting a tower. That's kind of boring. All right, so I am the AAA, and I already know that I want to go out here-ish, somewhere around there. I'll figure out if I'm in the right position once I get there. But if you were not the AAA, then you would just stay here, shoot some stuff. And then when the FC calls for you to burn to your anchor, then you burn to your anchor. Because the Vindicators are going to want to go towards all this shit and kill it. Whereas the Snipers don't want to go towards it because Snipers, it's not what we do. Whereas, yeah, so. But then the rest of the spawns, because it's going to be, this is the first one. And there's going to be two, three, and four spawns over here. So the Vindicators want to sweep around and get to that, whereas we want to just go forward. But if you're a new guy, you don't need to pay attention to any of that. You just need to make sure you're locking these numbers up, shooting 1, 2, 3, and then 9, and then go from there. This one's probably a tag 9, because he's going to tag other things before that. Because once these Osties are dead, then we get the second wave. But we don't exactly want the second wave until we are good to go. And I burned a little too far. I wanted it to be 60 km, but I ended up at 70. But I'll just burn back a little closer and then we'll be good to go. And hopefully I don't get bumped by a Macarial. But anyway, I forgot my drums again. So usually I'm on top of this, but it's kind of hard to be burning in space and then shooting targets and assigning drones at the same time. All right, do they, nope, I'm too far away. Come on, get closer. All right, we'll wait until he gets closer and then we'll sign for us. And we'll just keep shooting things. And I think, are we close enough? Eh, that's good enough. Yeah, we're fine. Probably a little close. We could afford to go this way a little bit. Just because we don't want to be too close to the next spot. That'll be bad. All right, so we're gonna shoot this Osti. And if you're a new guy, and if you get a TBPH as your first one, then no sweat. Like, you'll be fine. As long as you just broadcast on time, you'll be good to go. And one thing for broadcasting is that you really want to make sure that you broadcast early. So a lot of people think that they should be broadcasting once they take shield damage or once they get to a certain point. But if you do that, you're too late and you're going to die. You want to, like if I saw all of these yellow boxing or even just a few of them yellow boxing me, I would immediately broadcast for shields. 
just because it's better safe than sorry and the logi almost always have spare reps like each logistics should have four reps per and they'll only be using two or three at a time maybe four if someone's like really getting hammered but for the most part there's a lot of spare reps so even if you like just hit it then it won't cause someone else to die as long as you're being shot like don't just spam it because you don't know like if you get yellow boxed hit it and then you'll be good to go and you can see like there's some broadcast for in position some cap like if you need cap if you're like mwding around you don't have enough cap then you can request for that and basilisk will give you some cap if you broadcast in position that just means that you're no longer being shot so if all of these went to yellow, and then I would broadcast for shields, and they went to red, and I'd be getting revved up, but then once they went back to yellow, and I had no one else shooting me, then I would go ahead and broadcast in position, and that just lets the logistics pilots know that they no longer have to put reps on me, or cap on me. They can still keep me locked, that's at their discretion. They can lock up the 10 targets anyway, so it's not a big deal knowing who to unlock. It's just nice, especially in high DPS situations, where there's split aggro to know who actually needs the reps and who doesn't just to be able to help keep everyone alive a little bit more but i have never seen anyone die in a tdph just because the dps is so low and usually we are very much so overstaffed on logistics but you still need to be on wave especially this one this is a dangerous wave because it is two utunis so these are dangerous because they have energy neutralizers and they can very easily take all of your cap even as a battleship and drain it to zero in seconds and if you don't have cap then you can't run your adaptive invulns which means you don't have resistances which means you die so whoever gets these attunies you can see beefcake probably has the attunies so he has broadcasted for capacitor so that he can keep his tank running and that he doesn't die. But these are always the high, highest priority. Like if these are on the field, then they are the ones being shot at just because of the energy neutralizing. It's very dangerous. So now that those are off the field, we're good to go. This is pretty much just home sailing from now. So you can tell that I'm shooting numbers just because in this particular case, we don't have different targets. If there's ever like no, if there's only numbers as a sniper pilot, then you are good to go to just start shooting numbers. If there's no letters, but if there's an A or a B, like you should be shooting those. But in these particular waves, there's nothing dangerous that spawns outside of the vindicator range, so we don't have to have a distinction between the two different types. Okay. So we're just mopping this up. We're actually going a lot quicker because the first time I recorded this, we had a eh fleet. I mean, it was a fleet, but a lot of people had left right before then. And now we're up to basically a full fleet, whereas back then we had like 30 people. So we we're missing a lot of damage and it took about 26 minutes to complete the whole site. Whereas right now we're sitting at about 13 and a half and we're almost done. Well, not almost, we still have to beat the tower down it's going a lot quicker. So this one is the easiest, takes the longest, and it's pretty straightforward. You just have the three rooms, and then pretty much good to go. So now we just have this last Osti to kill, and then unless I missed a spawn, this should be the end. I might have missed a spawn, I don't know. Nope, we're done. All right, so we just need to kill these cruisers. So we're just gonna free fire because one, the FC told us to, and two, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So these are all cruisers. There's no more logistics frigates or cruisers on grid, so we don't have to really focus fire too much. And these guys don't really rep that much on their own. So we're free to just basically shoot, like this one, 20 kilometer perfect range, 40 meters per second, so it's being wed, so we know we can hit this. Whereas this guy is going 1300, there's no way we're gonna hit this. So we'll let the Vindicators either web that or shoot that, and then we will take care of what we can actually shoot. Another thing is to just go for, like this guy, as soon as he hits the armor, we can just try to alpha him, just so we can see some sweet numbers. And he's going pretty slow too. Ah, my cycle time's not fast enough. 
But that's stuff for like contests and stuff. I guess, ooh, I can talk about contests while we're bashing his TPPH. Yeah, that's what I'll do. All right, so now tower spawned. We're gonna get closer so we can start using Gleam. We're gonna launch our DPS drones. Normally, I would have a Ogre as part of my DPS group, but unfortunately, I left it behind on a previous TPPH, which happens all the time. All the time, people leave their drones. It's like the biggest thing. Everyone just spams and comms and inflate to, like, don't forget your drones after leaving a site. Because it happens all the time. Alright, so basically right now, this is our built-in bio break for incursions. Because it usually takes about five, four, five, six minutes, somewhere around there. Actually, we'll time it. We started at 15, 20 into the recording. So we'll see how long it takes for this to go down. Because we have quite a lot of indicators, so it might be pretty quick. It usually takes at least three, four, five minutes. So this is your free time to make a sandwich, to take a shower, to go to the bathroom, to let your dog out. Whatever you got to do, you can do it. Because right now, there's basically zero risk involved. Like, there's Logi pilots on grid. There's no enemy NPCs. They don't respawn. The tower doesn't shoot anyone you're good to go. Basically, the only thing that could possibly go wrong is if someone comes in and suicide ganks you, which I have never seen or heard of happening, so you were good. So we're just going to bash this until it's dead. It doesn't rep. It doesn't have any special features. You basically just sit here and just beat it to death, which is part of the reason why it's the least favorite of all of them is just because it takes so long to do it. Like, normally, if we were running an NRF or a TCRC, we'd already be done and on our uh, way to the second one. But we still have half the armor and all the structure left on this thing. So we guess I could talk about contests. So how contests work is that if there are two fleets running the same site at the same time, then whoever does the most damage to everything within the site gets the payout. And whoever gets second place gets nothing. So in that case, you want to end up taking high opportunity targets. Like if you're a Macarial or a Nightmare, then you just lock up everything, shoot within your optimal, don't shoot things at like 70 kilometers because after you know that's much damage. And if you see something in like armor or hole, then you want to shoot that because there's lower resistances and you end up doing more actual damage per shot. But that's pretty complicated stuff. You don't have to worry about it as a new person. And it doesn't happen that often because usually there's either not enough people for two fleets across two communities or the communities will just split up to two different zones anyway just so that you don't have that going on and you don't have people fighting over the sites because otherwise you have one group like getting all the best sites and one gets all the crappy sites like no one wants that everyone just wants to get all the sites for everyone so we'll just split up and go to different focuses and go from there all right so this thing is almost done and then hopefully from here actually let's broadcast for some caps and get Hopefully from here, we'll move on to one of these NRFs, and then I can get these recordings out of the way and onto YouTube. Oh shoot, I went way too close. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't pay attention I got up on this. Whoops, AAA approach the tower. My bad, oh, Which is fine, I mean, in a, any other site that'd be really bad if the anchor was not where you're supposed to be but since it's this one there's nothing dangerous it, it's fine because you don't want to be too close to the tower because then the logi is orbiting the anchor so then if their orbit hits the tower then they'll stop moving and the npcs will actually notice that because they go for targets of opportunity and they will start shooting whatever logi pilot isn't moving or is stuck and that's bad because especially as one of the cruiser sized logistics ships that's all of your tank is basically in your sig radius and in your speed you don't actually have very much buffer or ehp it's all in your sig radius all right so that's done we got our payout and all right so i'll see you guys for the second one the nrf
Thanks for watching.